Greetings from the great state of Alaska. My name is Dr. G, and today I want to share with you a message of hope. We're going to be looking at the second half of Psalm chapter 74 today. We, we looked at the first half last week. Uh, this psalm is titled, A Mass Skill of Asaph. And being a mass skill, that's a type of psalm. This psalm conveys the need to ponder and to contemplate the true meaning of the psalm. And with that said, what I would like to do is, is reread the first 11 verses, which is what we looked at last week. I'm just going to read the first 11 verses, and then we will uh, we'll jump into verse 12. So if you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to Psalm chapter 74, and I'm going to read verses 1 through 11. Why have you rejected us forever, O God? Why does your anger smolder against the sheep of your pasture? Remember the people you purchased of old, the tribe of your inheritance whom you redeemed, Mount Zion where you dwelt. Turn your steps toward these everlasting ruins. All this destruction the enemy has brought on the sanctuary. Your foes roared in the place where you met with us. They set up their standards as signs. They behaved like men wielding axes to cut through a thicket of trees. They smashed all the carved paneling with their axes and their hatchets. They burned your sanctuary to the ground. They defiled the dwelling place of your name. They said in their hearts, we will crush them completely. They burned every place where God was worshipped in the land. We are given no miraculous signs, no prophets are left, and none of us knows how long this will be. How long will the enemy mock you, O God? Will the foe revile your name forever? Why do you hold back your hand, your right hand? Take it from the folds of your garment and destroy them. So in this first half of Psalm chapter 74, the psalmist, he's describing the destructive nature of the enemy. <clears throat> and that destruction, as I read those verses, that destruction was targeting the sanctuary of God and the people of God. And the psalmist, he, he feels rejected and abandoned during this time of destruction. And we noted last week that our enemy today is the same enemy that Israel had a thousand years ago. 2,000 years ago. That enemy today is also very destructive. Satan, he wants to destroy our faith. He wants to destroy our worship, our godly heritage. And for example, all you have to do is look at the recent mockery of the Last Supper during the 2024 Olympic opening ceremony in Paris. Satan, he hates true worship. And that's exactly what God is looking for, is true worship. Amen. In John chapter 4, verse 24, Jesus, he, he said to the woman at the well that God is looking for those who worship in spirit and truth. Satan hates those people. Satan hates true worship. In Psalm chapter 74, Asaph, he is pleading for God to step in and do something. And today we are, or we should be, pleading for God to step in and take action, much like Asaph. And given that context, we're going to continue our study today. We're going to open, uh, just continue at verse 12. And so let's go ahead and turn to verse 12. Psalm chapter 74, verse 12. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says, But you, O God, are my king from of old. You bring salvation upon the earth. Even though the enemy is creating chaos and destroying everything in his path, the psalmist is anchored in his faith. Are you anchored in your faith today? Despite all the chaos going on in the world, 
despite the mockery of Christ in the Last Supper in the Paris 2024 Olympics, are you anchored in your faith? You know, this verse is not an empty sentence coming from the mouth of an atheist or an agnostic. This verse is a declaration of faith that rests upon Almighty God, the great I Am, Yahweh. Like Asaph, we need to make a declaration of faith when we're under attack. We need to say, You, O God, are my King. You, O God, have saved me and redeemed me. The enemy can't touch me because I belong to you, Lord. That should be our declaration today. The next five verses, verses 13 uh, through 18, it, it focuses on the strength and the power of God over all the earth. And so let's look at verse 13. Hallelujah, hallelujah. <clears throat> Verse 13 says, It was you who split open the sea by your power. You broke the heads of the monster in the waters. You know, this verse is likely referring to Israel's exodus from the land of Egypt. Remember, it was Pharaoh who wanted to keep Israel from worshiping God. Like I said, the enemy's the same today as he was yesterday. He wants to destroy true worship. You might say Pharaoh was obstructing and destroying Israel's worship practice. <laughs> so God, he pulled out his right hand, which is what Asaph is asking here. God pulled out his right hand. He sent ten plagues upon the land of Egypt. And it wasn't until the final plague, the death of the firstborn son, that Pharaoh finally yielded. Matter of fact, in Exodus chapter 12, verse 31, it says that Pharaoh said to Moses, Up, leave my people, you and the Israelites. Go, worship the Lord as you have requested. Take your flocks and your herds as you have said and go. And so that's what Israel did. They, they left the land of Egypt. And God, he parted the waters. He, remember, he parted the Red Sea. And Israel, they crossed over on dry land. And then the enemy, Pharaoh, and his soldiers, the monster, in his heart, in his rebellious heart, he decided to pursue Israel into the Red Sea. And God destroyed the monster. Amen. He broke the head of the the heads of the monster. He drowned Pharaoh and the soldiers as they tried to pursue Israel. Hallelujah. Let's look at verse 14. <clears throat> it was you who crushed the heads of Leviathan and gave him as food to the creatures of the desert. Okay. The word Leviathan, it, it's used to describe a very large sea creature or serpent. Now this reference to Leviathan and the monster in the water is, is really a reference to God's rebellious enemies and ultimately Satan. Satan is referred to as a dragon, as a serpent throughout Scripture. Especially in Revelation we see this description. You know, God has destroyed, amen, and God is destroying that ominous creature who thrives in the depths of darkness. Also the enemy of our souls. He's grinding him, you could say it to hamburger. God is destroying the enemy. God has destroyed the enemy. Let's look at verse 15. Hallelujah. It says, It was you who opened up springs and streams, you dried up the ever-flowing rivers. You know, God is the creator of nature. The springs and the streams and the rivers. God created all of it. God is in total control. And in Exodus chapter 17, as Israel traveled across the desert to get to the promised land, 
God provided them with water. Amen. He opened up springs of water for them. And he does the same for you and I. Matter of fact, in John chapter 7, verse 37, Jesus said, Come to me, you who are thirsty, and I will give you streams of living water. Praise God. Aren't you glad that, glad that God quenches our thirst today? Let's look at verses 16 and 17. The day is yours, and yours also the night. You established the sun and the moon. It was you who set all the boundaries of the earth. You made both summer and winter. Indeed, God, he reigns supreme over all of creation. He is the master of the universe. Amen. And he's the savior of my soul. Isn't that amazing? The master of the universe, the creator of heaven and earth, is also the savior of our soul. He loves you so much. He loves you so much that he stepped out of outside of eternity, he stepped into time, took on human form as Jesus Christ. He died on the cross to save you. What a mighty God we serve. Praise God. Let's look at verses 18 and 19. Hallelujah. It says, Remember how the enemy has mocked you, O Lord. How foolish people have reviled your name. Do not hand over the life of your dove to wild beasts. Do not forget the lives of your afflicted people forever. You know, this prayer is a reminder that God's enemies are also our enemies. It's a plea for deliverance for the righteous and judgment for the wicked. Verses 20 and 21. Have regard for your covenant, because haunts of violence fill the dark places of the land. Do not let the oppressed retreat in disgrace. May the poor and needy praise your name. You know, like Asaph, we, we find ourselves surrounded by darkness as we watch evil and violence run rampant in the land. But God is a covenant-keeping God. Amen. He has made a covenant with Israel, and he has made a covenant with the church. The covenant with the church, with you and I, it's based on God's grace and his plan of redemption. Matter of fact, Hebrews chapter 7 Verse 22, it says, Jesus has become the guarantee of a better covenant. Aren't you thankful today for Jesus Christ? No matter what happens around us, our hope, it remains intact because of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's look at verses 22 and 23. These are the final two verses of Psalm chapter 74. It says, Rise up, O God. And defend your cause. Remember how fools mock you all day long. Do not ignore the clamor of your adversaries. The uproar of your enemies which rises continually. You know these final verses of, of chapter uh, 74. These final verses they are a reminder that God himself is being mocked by the enemy. Asaph he was concerned with the welfare of the righteous, of the people of Israel in the previous verses, but he's concerned with God's name, God's reputation, God's glory in these final two verses. And just as God was mocked by foolish people in Asaph's day, God is being mocked by foolish people in our day. Once again, the 2024 Olympics say, that opening ceremony is just a prime example of what I'm talking about. As covenant people, we can stand on the promises of God. We can believe the word of God. Amen? Galatians chapter 6, verse 7, it tells us that God cannot be mocked. In other words, there's a day of reckoning coming. There's a day of reckoning, and God will be glorified. Amen? God will be glorified. And if you're serving God today, 
if you're standing upon his word, if you're numbered with the righteous, if you're numbered with the saints, not because of your good works, but because of God's grace, that's going to be a day of celebration. But if you're a person who mocks God, if you're a person who rejects God and you do your own thing, that's going to be a doomsday. Make sure that you're not on the wrong side come that day. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you today for your goodness and for your mercy. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that your grace is free to all who believe, to all who confess your name as their Savior, that your grace is free. Oh, I'm thankful, Lord. God, I pray for those who are watching and listening today. I pray that this scripture that we've just read together, I pray that this would be a blessing and an encouragement to them. Lord, that when they look all around them and they see darkness and they see evil, Lord, I pray that you would open their eyes that they might also see the glory of God. Lord, that they might also see the grace of God. Lord, that there would just be a peace that comes over them because that they know that you are in control, that you are, like we just read, the, the master and creator of this universe. And Lord, that you've provided a way of salvation for, for those who trust in your name today, just like you did for Asaph, just like you did for David. Lord, today we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. May you be glorified. Lord, may you be lifted up. And we, we ask just your blessing to be upon those who are watching and and listening today. Lord, may they be encouraged. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. God bless you.